What's up everybody? It is a Throwback Thursday. On today's Throwback Thursday, we've got the strange story of LW Wright. Coming up next. So I was perusing NASCAR's YouTube channel and uh, I had heard the jokes about LW Wright, but I never really knew what the actual story was behind it. So I checked out their video on that page and it's a really great video. So I'm going to include the link down there in the, in the description, but here are the cliff notes. Billed from Nashville in 1982, L.W. Wright ran one race, and that was at Talladega Speedway, and after that, he completely disappeared. So let's set the story up just a little bit. The 1980s, uh, it was a time of excess, money, money was king, uh, a lot of uh, big lifestyle living was going on, there was no internet, there were no cell phones, there were no cameras all over the place. Uh, and the money was flowing into NASCAR because NASCAR had started to grow in popularity because of cable TV. So NASCAR and money were psh, hand in hand, like it was right there. And so it was prime picking for a con artist and a con artist stepped in. So somewhere, some dude decided to go by the name of L.W. Wright and he convinced a guy at a company, big, big uh, promotional company to uh, give him some money. And with that money, he went and met up with a local Nashville guy uh, by the name of Sterling Marlin. Might have heard of him before. Now, at this point, Sterling Marlin had not run in NASCAR. Like I said, he was just a local guy tearing it up at the local tracks. But he goes up to Sterling Marlin with a fist full of money and says, I want to buy your 1981 Chevrolet Monte Carlo. And he works out a deal with Sterling Marlin. Sterling Marlin takes the money. And in a weird twist of fate, Sterling Marlin's like, well, not you can't just buy my car, but I also want to be your crew chief. Uh, and so Sterling Marlin becomes the guy's crew chief. And so he probably, this probably wasn't even part of his plan, but automatically he got like basically a race team and a race car with the money he paid for the race car. So along the way, it wasn't really smooth sailing. They, they found out that he sort of had lied about his backstory and there was some doubt about his credentials, but like I said, there was no internet. This was the eighties. So everything was on paper, so you couldn't really trace it. But a few people were suspicious, but he was a smooth enough talker to put these people off of his trail. So he was able to continue without getting caught before the race. So fast forward to the race. He actually qualifies, because uh, back then you had to qualify. There were no, you know, people weren't locked in with, uh, what, what are these things called? Charters. People weren't locked in with charters. And so he had to qualify. He did qualify. But then on his second qualifying lap, he wrecks the car. Uh, but he did still qualify for the race. They end up putting the car back together. He goes into the race and maybe 18 or 12 laps into the race, maybe less than that. I don't know. Uh, he looks like a fish out of water. Uh, this is the point where he just becomes totally exposed as not being a race car driver. And NASCAR parks him because every incident on the track was involving him because he didn't know what he was doing. So they park him. He gets out of the car and leaves the racetrack never to be seen again. So come along the next couple days, they find out that every check he wrote for tires to fuel to everything else, entry fee, every single one of those checks had bounced. And not only that, but he had made out with uh, basically some prize money and some other stuff, uh, which was about fit, which was $50,000 back then. Uh, in today's money, that would be $140,000, uh, give or take. So he made out with $140,000. Obviously, people at NASCAR were upset and they were mad. But they didn't pursue it because they didn't want the negative press or whatever. So they actually just kind of let the guy get away. And people did sort of investigate the situation. But then it just came to light that... L.W. Uh, Wright was a fake name. The, the name of the team was a fake name. The name of the uh, sponsor was, was a fake name. So, and that was pretty much it. Nobody has ever seen L.W. Wright. There is one picture of him. 
And that's pretty much it. He pretty much disappeared into thin air. Uh, and that's the story. Like I said, uh, check the description. There is a, about a 17 minute video on the NASCAR site. It's really awesome. So check that out if you're interested in it. But uh, other than that, that's all I got for you. If you liked the content, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. And thanks for your time. Peace.